सवितुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो दीम धियो यो न प्रचोदया ओं शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज वीडियो नंबर 14 ऑन गॉस्पेल ऑफ श्री रामकृष्ण परमहंसा दिस वीडियो नंबर 14 स्टार्ट्स विद मास्टर्स डीप स्पिरिचुअल एक्सपीरियंसेस फॉर ए टाइम मास्टर एंड डिसाइपल remained silent then sri ramakrishna began to describe his experiences of brahma master one day i had the vision of consciousness non dual and indivisible at first it had been revealed to me that there were innumerable men animals and other creatures among them there were aristocrats the english the muslims myself scavengers dogs and also a bearded muslim with an earthenware tray of rich in his hand an earthenware tray of rice in his hand he put a few grains of rice into everybody's mouth i too tasted a little another day i saw rice vegetables and other food stuff and filled and dirt as well lying around suddenly the soul came out of my body and like a flame touched everything it was like a protruding tongue of fire and tasted everything once even the excreta it was revealed to me that all these are one substance the non dual and indivisible consciousness another day it was revealed to me that i had devotees in my intimate companions my very own therefore i would climb to the roof of the kutti as soon as the bells and the conch shells of the evening service sounded in the temples and cry out with a longing heart oh where are you all come here i am dying to see you to m well what do you think of these visions and god sports through you this i have realized that you are the instrument and god is the master god has created other beings as if with a machine but yourself with his own hands master well hazra says that after the vision of god one acquires the six divine powers and those who seek pure love don't want powers master perhaps hazra was a poor man in his previous life and that is why he wants so much to see the manifestation of power he wants to know what i talk about with the cook he says to me you don't have to talk to the cook i shall talk to the manager of the temple myself and see that you get everything you want and laughs aloud he talks to me that way and i say nothing and many a time you have said that a devotee who loves god for the sake of love does not care to see god's powers a true devotee wants to see god as gopala in the beginning god becomes the magnet and the devotee the needle but in the end the devotee himself becomes the magnet and god the needle that is to say 
God becomes small to his devotee. Master, yes, it is just like the sun at dawn. You can easily look at that sun. It does not dazzle the eyes, rather it satisfies them. God becomes tender for the sake of his devotees. He appears before them, setting aside his powers. Both remained silent for some time. And why should your visions not be real? If they are unreal, then the world is still more unreal. For there is only one mind that is the instrument of perception. Your pure mind sees those visions and our ordinary mind see worldly objects. Master, I see that you have grasped the idea of unreality. Well, tell me what you think of Hazra. And, oh, I don't know, the master laughs. Master, well, do you find me to be like anybody else? M. No, sir. Master, like any other Paramahansa? M. No, sir. You can't be compared to anybody else. Master, smiling. Have you heard of a tree called the Achina? M. No, sir. Master, there is a tree called by that name, but nobody knows what it is. M. Likewise, it is not possible to recognize you. The more a man understands you, the more uplifted he will be. And was silent, he said to himself. The master referred to the sun at dawn and the tree unrecognizable by man. Did he mean an incarnation of God? Is this the play of God through man? Is the master himself an incarnation? Was this why he cried to the devotees from the roof of the Kuti? Where are you? Come to me. Sri Ramakrishna was sitting on the steps of the southeast veranda of the Kali temple. Rakhal, M and Hazra were with him. He talked light-heartedly about his boyhood days. When it was dusk, he returned to his room and sat down on the small couch. Soon he went into Smadhi and in that state began to talk to the Divine Mother. He said, Mother, what is all this row about? Shall I go there? I shall go if you take me. The master was to go to a devotee's house. Was it for this that he was asking the Divine Mother's permission. Again, he spoke to her, perhaps praying about an intimate disciple. Mother, please make him stand less. Well, Mother, why have you given him only a particle? Remaining silent a moment, he said, Oh, I see, that will be enough for your work. Nature of the Divine Incarnation. In the same state, he said, addressing the devotees, that which is Dharma is verily Shakti. I address that again as the Mother. I call it Dharma when it is inactive and Shakti when it creates, preserves and destroys. It is like water, sometimes still and sometimes covered with waves. The incarnation of God is a part of the Leela of Shakti. The purpose of the Divine Incarnation is to teach man ecstatic love for God. The incarnation is like the udder of the cow the only place milk is to be God. God incarnates himself as man. There is a great accumulation of divinity in an incarnation like the accumulation of fish in a deep hollow 
in a lake. Some of the devotees wondered, Is Sri Ramakrishna an incarnation of God like Krishna, Chaitanya and Christ? Sunday, September 9, 1883 Sri Ramakrishna had finished his midday meal and was sitting on the small couch. Rakhal, Am and Ratan were sitting on the floor. Ratan was the steward of Jadu Malik's garden house and was devoted to the master. Now and then Ram Chatterjee and Hazra passed in or out of the room. It was about two o'clock. Ratan told the master that a Yatra performance by Neil Kantha had been arranged in Jadu Malik's house in Calcutta. Ratan to the master, you must go. The date has been set. Master, that is good. I want to go. Neil Kantha sings with great devotion. A devotee. That is true, sir. Master, tears flow from his eyes as he sings. To Ratan, I am thinking of spending the night in Calcutta when I go to see the Yatra. Ratan, that will be fine. Ram Chatterjee and the other devotees asked Ratan about a theft in Jadu Malik's house. Ratan, yes, the golden sandals of the deity were stolen from the shrine room in Jadu Babu's house. It has created an uproar. They are going to try to discover the thief by means of a charmed plate. Everybody will sit in one room and the plate will move in the direction of the man who stole the sandals. Master with a smile, how does the plate move by itself? Return. No, a man presses it to the ground. A devotee. It is a kind of sleet of hand. It is a clever trick. Master, the real cleverness is the cleverness by which one realizes God. That trick is the best of all tricks. As the conversation went on, several Bengali gentlemen entered the room and after saluting the master sat down. One of them was already known to Sri Ramakrishna. These gentlemen followed the cult of Tantra. The master knew that one of them indulged in immoral acts in the name of religion. The Tantra rituals under certain conditions allow the mixing of men and women devotees. But Sri Ramakrishna regarded all women, even prostitutes, as manifestations of the Divine Mother. He addressed them all as Mother. Master with a smile, where is Achalananda? My ideal is different from that of Achalananda and his disciples. As for myself, I look on all women as my mother. The visiting gentleman sat silent. <coughs> Master's attitude towards women. Master, every woman is a mother to me. Achlananda used to stay here now and then. He would drink a great deal of consecrated wine. Hearing about my attitude towards women, he stubbornly justified his own views. He insisted again and again, why should you not recognize the attitude of a hero towards women? Won't you admit the injunctions of Shiva? Shiva himself is the author of the Tantra, which prescribes various disciplines, including the heroic. I said to him, but my dear sir, I do not know. I do not like these ideas. To me, every woman is a mother. 
Atlananda did not support his own children. He said to me, God will support them. I said nothing, but this is the way I felt about it. Who will support your children? I hope your renunciation of wife and children is not a way of earning money. People will think you are a holy man because you have renounced everything, so they will give you money. In that way, you will earn plenty of money. Spiritual practice with a view to winning a lawsuit and earning money or to helping others win in court and acquire property shows a very mean understanding. Good use of money. Money enables a man to get food and drink, build a house, worship the deity, serve devotees, holy man and help the poor when he happens to meet them. These are the good uses of money. Money is not meant for luxuries or creatures' comforts or for buying a position in society. People practice various tantric disciplines to acquire supernatural powers. How mean such people are! Krishna said to Arjuna, Friend, by acquiring one of the eight Siddhis, you may add a little to your power, but you will not be able to realize me. One cannot get rid of Maya as long as one exercises supernatural powers, and Maya begets egotism. Body and wealth are impermanent. Why go to so much trouble for their sakes? You think of the plight of hot yogis. Their attention is shifted on one ideal only longevity. They do not aim at the realization of God at all. They practice such exercises as washing out the intestines, drinking milk through a tube, and the like with that one aim in view. There was once a goldsmith whose tongue suddenly turned up and stuck to his palate. He looked like a man in samadhi. He became completely inert and remained so a long time. People came to worship him. After several years, his tongue suddenly returned to its natural position and he became conscious of things as before. So he went back to his work as a goldsmith, all love. These are physical things and have nothing to do with God. There was a man who knew 82 posters and talked big about Yoga Smadhi, but inwardly he was drawn to women and gold. Once he found a bank note worth several thousand rupees, he could not resist the temptation and swallowed it, thinking he would get it out somehow later on. The note was got out of him all right, but he was sent to jail for three years. In my jailness, I used to think that the man had made in my Jailessness, I used to think that the man had made great spiritual progress. Really, I say it upon my word. Master's Renunciation of Money Mahendra Pal of Sinti once gave Ramlal five rupees. Ramlal told me about it after he had gone. I asked him what the gift was for. Dara and Ramlal said that it was meant for me. I thought it might enable me to pay off some of my debt for milk. That night I went to bed and if you will believe me, I suddenly woke up with a pain. I felt as if a cat were scratching inside my chest. I at once went to Ramlal and asked him for whom did Mahendra give this money? Was it for you, your aunt, 
No, said Ramlal, it is meant for you. I said to him, go and return the money at once or I shall have no peace of mind. Ramlal returned the money early in the morning and I felt relieved. Once a rich man came here and said to me, Sir, you must do something so that I may win my lawsuit. I have heard of your reputation and so I have come here. My dear sir, I said to him, you have made a mistake. I am not the person you are looking for. Achlananda is your man. A true devotee of God does not care for such things as wealth or health. He thinks, why should I practice spiritual austerities for creature comforts and money or name and fame? These are all impermanent. They last only a day or two. The visiting gentleman took leave of the master after saluting him. When they had departed, Sri Ramakrishna smiled and said to him, You can never make a thief listen to religion or love. Well, what do you think of Narendra? M. He is splendid, master. Yes, his intelligence is as great as his learning. Besides, he is gifted in music both as a singer and player. Then too, he has control over his passions. He says he will never marry. And you once said that one who constantly talks of his sin really becomes a sinner. He cannot extricate himself from sin. But if a man has firm faith that he is the son of God, then he makes rapid strides in spiritual life. Master. Yes, faith. What tremendous faith Krishna Kishore had. He used to say, I have spoken the name of God once. That is enough. How can I remain a sinner? I have become pure and stainless. One day, Haladhari said, even Azamila had to perform austerities to gratify God. Gratify God. Can one receive the grace of God without austerities? What will one gain by speaking the name of Narayana only once? At these remarks, Krishna Kishore's anger knew no bounds. The next time he came to this garden to pick flowers, he would not even look at Haladhari. Haladhari's father was a great devotee. At bathing time, he would stand waist deep in the water and meditate on God uttering the sacred mantra, then the tears would flow from his eyes. Krishna Kesur's faith in God. One day a holy man came to the bathing place on the Ganges at Aryadaha. He, we talked about seeing him. Haradhari said, what shall we gain by seeing the body of a man? A mere case made of the five elements. Krishna Kishore heard about it and said, What did Haladhari ask? What would be gained by visiting a holy man? By repeating the name of Krishna or Rama, a man transformed his physical body into a spiritual body. To such a man, everything is the embodiment of spirit. To him, Krishna is the embodiment of spirit and his sacred abode is the embodiment of spirit. He also said, a man who utters the name of Krishna or Rama even once raised the result of a hundred sandhyas. One of his sons chanted the name of Rama on his deathbed. Krishna Kishore said, he has nothing to worry about. He has chanted the name of Rama, but now and then he wept 
after all it was the death of his own son nothing whatsoever is achieved by the performance of worship japa and devotions without faith is not that so and yes sir that is true master i see people coming to the ganges to bathe they talk there they talk their heads off about everything under the sun the widowed aunt says without me they cannot perform the durga puja i have to look after even the smallest detail again i have to supervise everything when there is a marriage festival in the family even the bed of the bride and groom and why should we blame them how else will they pass the time master with a smile some people have their shrine rooms in their attics the women arrange the offerings and flowers and make the sandal paste but while doing so they never say a word about god the burden of the conversation is what shall we cook today i could not get good vegetables in the market that curry was delicious yesterday that boy is my cousin hello there have you that job still don't ask me how i am my hurry is no more just fancy they talk of such things in the shrine room at the time of worship and yes sir it is so in the majority of cases as you say can one who has passionate yearning for god continue formal worship and devotion for long sri rama krishna and n were now conversing alone and sir if it is god himself who has become everything then why do people have so many different feelings master undoubtedly god exists in all beings as the all pervading spirit but the manifestations of his power are different in different beings in some places there is a manifestation of the power of knowledge in others of the power of ignorance in some places there is a greater manifestation of power than in others don't you see that among human beings there are cheats and gamblers to say nothing of men who are like tigers i think of them as the cheat god the tiger god and with a smile we should salute them from a distance if we go near the tiger god and embrace him he may devour us master he and his power brahma and its power nothing else exist but this in a hymn to rama narada said o rama you are shiva and sita is bhagavati you are brahma and sita is brahmani you are indra and sita is indrani you are narayana and sita is lakshmi o rama you are the symbol of all that is masculine and sita of all that is feminine then sir what is the spirit form of god like sri rama krishna reflected a moment and said softly shall i tell you what it is like it is like water one understands all this through spiritual discipline believe in the form of god it is only after attaining brahm jnana that one sees non duality the oneness of brahma and its shakti brahma and shakti are identical like fire and its power to burn when a man thinks of fire when a man thinks of fire he must also think of its power to burn again 
when he thinks of the power to burn he must also think of fire further brahma and shakti are like milk and its whiteness water and its wetness vigyana or transcendental knowledge but there is a stage beyond even brahma jnana after jnana comes to vigyana he who is aware of knowledge is also aware of ignorance the sage vasishta was stricken with grief at the death of his 100 sons asked by lakshmana why a man of knowledge should grieve for such a reason rama said brother go beyond both knowledge and ignorance he who has knowledge has ignorance also if a thorn has entered your foot get another thorn and with it shall take out the first then throw away the second also and should one throw away both knowledge and ignorance master yes that's why one should acquire vigyana you see who is aware of light is also aware of darkness he who is aware of happiness is also aware of spring he who is aware of virtue is also aware of vice he who is aware of good is also aware of evil he who is aware of holiness is also aware of unholiness he who is aware of i is also aware of you what is vigyana it is knowing god in a special way the awareness and conviction that fire exists in wood is jnana knowledge but to cook rice on that fire eat the rice and get nourishment from it is vigyana to know by one's inner experience that god exists in jnana but to talk to him to enjoy him as a child as a friend as master as beloved is vigyana the realization that god alone has become the universe and all living beings is vigyana according to one school of thought god cannot be seen who sees whom is god outside you that you can see him one sees only oneself having once entered the black waters of the ocean the ship does not come back and so cannot describe what it experiences and it is true sir as you say having climbed to the top of the monument one becomes unaware of what is below horses and carriages men and women houses shops and offices and so on master i do not go to the kali temple nowadays is that an offense at one time narendra used to say what he still goes to the kali temple and every day you are in a new state of mind how can you ever offend god master someone said to sen about here that he is very ill please bring two pieces of cloth and a couple of shirts for him we will send them to his village sen offered only two rupees how do you explain that he has so much money and yet he is so miserly what do you say to that and those who seek god cannot behave that way i mean those whose goal is the attainment of knowledge master god alone is the reality and all else is unreal saturday september 22 1883 Sri Ramakrishna was seated in the drawing room of Adhar's house in Calcutta with Rakhal, Adhar, M, Ishan and other devotees. Many gentlemen of the 
neighborhood were also present. It was afternoon. The master was very fond of Ishan. He had been a superintendent in the accountant general's office and later on his children also occupied high comment positions. One of them was a classmate of Narendra. Ishan's purse was always open for the poor and needy. When he retired from service, he devoted his time to spiritual practices and charity. He often visited Sri Ramakrishna at Dakshineswar. Master to Ishan, please tell us the story of the boy who posted the letter, Ishan with a smile. A boy once heard that God is our creator, so he wrote a letter to God, setting forth his prayers and posted it. The address he put on the envelope was heaven. Master with a smile, did you hear that story? One succeeds in spiritual life when one dwells a faith like that boy's. To Ishan, tell us about the renunciation of activities. Ishan, after the attainment of God, religious duties such as the Sandha drops away. One day some people were sitting on the bank of the Ganges performing the Sandhya, but one of them abstained from it. On being asked the reason, he said, I am observing Asucha. Asucha. I cannot perform the Sandhya ceremony. In my case, the defilement is due to both a birth and a death. My mother, ignorance, is dead and my son self-knowledge has been born. Master, tell us also how caste distinctions drop away when one attains self-knowledge. Ishan, Sankaracharya was once climbing the steps after finishing his bath in the Ganges when he saw just in front of him an untouchable who had a pack of dogs with him. You have touched me, said Sankara. Rabbit, sir, said the Priha. I have not touched you, nor have you touched me. The self is the inner ruler of all beings and cannot be contaminated. Is there any difference between the sun's reflection in wine and its reflection in the Ganges? Master with a smile and about harmony, how one can realize God through all paths. Ishan smiling, both Hari and Hara are derived from the same root. The difference is only in the Parthaya, in reality. He who is Hari is also Hara. If a man has faith in God, then it does not matter whom he worships. Master, and please tell us also how the heart of the sadhu is the greatest of all, Ishan. The earth is the largest thing we see anywhere around us, but larger than the earth is the ocean, and larger than the ocean is the sky, but Vishnu, the God, had also covered its earth, sky, and the nether world with one of his feet, and that foot of Vishnu is enshrined in the sadhu's heart. Therefore, the heart of a holy man is the greatest of all. The devotees were delighted with Ishan's words. Ishan intended to retire to a solitary place and practice a special discipline of the Gayatri through which Brahma is involved. But the master said that the knowledge of Brahma was not possible without the complete destruction of worldliness. Further, he said that it was impossible for a man 
totally to withdraw his mind from the objects of the senses in the Kali Yuga when his life was dependent on food. That's why the master discouraged people from attempting the Vedic worship of Brahma and asked them to worship Shakti, the Divine Mother who is identical with Brahma. Master to Ishan, why do you waste your time simply repeating Neti Neti? Nothing whatsoever can be specified about Brahma except that it exists. Whatever we see or think about is the manifestation of the glory of the primordial energy, the primal consciousness, creation, preservation and the destruction, living beings and the universe and further meditation and the meditator, bhakti and prema, all these are manifestations of the glory of that power. But Brahma is identical with its power. On returning from Ceylon, Hanuman praised Rama, saying, O Rama, you are the Supreme Brahma and Sita is your Shakti. You and she are identical Brahma and Shakti are like the snake and its wriggling motion. Thinking of the snake, one must think of its wriggling motion. And Thinking of its wriggling motion, one must think of the snake, or they are like milk and its whiteness. Thinking of milk, one has to think of its color, that is whiteness, and thinking of the whiteness of milk, one has to think of milk itself, or they are like water and its wetness. Thinking of water, one has to think of its wetness, and thinking of the wetness of water, one has to think of water. This primal power, Mahamaya, has covered Brahma. As soon as the covering is withdrawn, one realizes, I am what I was before, I am thou, thou art I. As long as that covering remains the Vedantic formula, I am he, that is, man is the Supreme Brahma, does not rightly apply. The wave is part of the water, but the water is not part of the wave. As long as that covering remains, one should call on God as Mother. Addressing God, the devotee should say, Thou art the Mother and I am thy child. Thou art the master and I am thy servant. It is good to have the attitude of servant towards the master. From this relationship of master and servant spring up other attitudes. The attitude of serene love for God, the attitude of friend towards friend and so forth. When the master loves his servant, he may say to him, Come sit by my side. There is no difference between you and me. But if the servant comes forward of his own will to sit by the master, will not the master be angry? God's play on earth as an incarnation is the manifestation of the glory of the Chitta Shakti, the divine power. That which is Brahma is also Rama, Krishna and Shiva, Ishan. Yes, sir, both Hari and Hara are derived from the same root. The difference lies only in the Parthaya. Master, yes, there is only one without a second. The Vedas speak of it as Om Satya Chit Ananda Brahma. The Puranas as Om Sit Chit Ananda Krishna and the Tantra as Om Sit Sat Chit Ananda Shiva. The Chit Shakti as Mahamaya has deluded all with ignorance. It is said in the Adhyatma Ramayana that when the Rishis or Rama, they prayed to him in these words only. O Rama, please do not delude us with your world bewitching Maya. Ishan, what is this Maya? Master, whatever you see, think or hear is Maya. In a word, women and gold is the covering of Maya. 
There is no harm in chewing betel leaf, eating fish, smoking, or rubbing the body with oil. What will one achieve by renouncing only these things? The one thing needful is the renunciation of woman and gold. That renunciation is the real and supreme renunciation. Householders should go into solitude now and then to practice spiritual discipline in order to cultivate devotion to God. They should renounce mentally, but the sannyasi should renounce both mentally and physically. I once said to Keshav, how can a typhoid patient be cured if he remains in a room where a pitcher of water and a jar of pickles are kept? Now and then one should live in solitude. A devotee, sir, what do you think of the Navavidhan? It seems to me like a hodgepodge of everything, master. Some say it is a modern thing. That sets me wondering. Then is the god of Brahmasmas a new god? The Brahmas speak of their cult as the Navavidhan, as a new dispensation. Well, it may be so. Who knows? There are six systems of philosophy, so perhaps it is like one of these. But do you know where those who speak of the formless God make their mistake? It is where they say what God is formless only and that those who differ with them are wrong. But I know that God is both with and without form and he may have many more aspects. It is possible for him to be everything. To Isan, the Chitta Shakti Mahamaya has become the 24 cosmic principles. One day as I was meditate, meditating, my mind wandered away to Raske's house. He is a scavenger. I said to my mind, stay there. You know, the Divine Mother revealed to me that the men and women in this house were mere masks. Inside them was the same Divine Power, Kundalini, that rises up through the six spiritual centers of the body. Is the primal energy man or woman? Once at Kamar Pokor, I saw the worship of Kali in the house of the Lahas. They put a sacred thread on the image of the Divine Mother. One man asked, why have they put the sacred thread on the Mother's person? The master of the house said, Brother, I see that you have rightly understood the Mother, but I do not yet know whether the Divine Mother is male or female. It is said that Mahamaya swallowed Shiva. When the six centers in her were awakened, Shiva came out through her thigh. Then Shiva created the Tantra philosophy. Take refuge in the Chitta Shakti, the Mahamaya, Ishan. Please bestow your grace on me. Master, say to God with a joyless heart, O oh God, reveal thyself to me and weep. Pray to God, O oh God, keep my mind away from woman and gold and dive deep. Can a man get pearls by floating or swimming on the surface? He must dive deep. Faith in the Guru. One must get instruction from a Guru. Once a man was looking for a stone image of Shiva. Someone said to him, go to a certain river. There you will find a tree. Near it is a whirlpool. Dive into the water there and you will find the image of Shiva. So I say that one must get instruction from a teacher. Ishan, that is true, sir. Master, it is Sukhchit Ananda that comes to us in the form of the Guru. 
If a man is initiated by a human guru, he will not achieve anything if he regards his guru as a mere man. The guru should be regarded as the direct manifestation of God. Only then can the disciple have faith in the mantra given by the guru. Once a man has faith, he achieves all. The sutra Eklavya learned archery in the forest before a clay image of Drona. He worshipped the image as the living Drona that by itself enabled him to attain mastery in archery. Don't mix intimately with Brahmin Pandits. Their only concern is to earn money. I have seen Brahmin priest reciting the Chandi while performing the Savastyana. It is hard to tell whether they are reading the sacred books or something else. They turn half the pages without reading them. All love. A nail life suffices to kill oneself. One needs sword and shield to kill others. That is the purpose of the Shastras. One does not really need to study the different scriptures. If one has no discrimination, one does not achieve anything through mere scholarship. Even though one studies all the six systems of philosophy, call on God, cry to Him secretly in solitude, He will give all that you need. Sri Ramakrishna had heard that Ishan was building a house on the bank of the Ganges for the practice of spiritual discipline. He asked Ishan eagerly, Has the house been built? Let me tell you that the less people know of your spiritual life, the better it will be for you. Devotees endowed with sattva meditate in a secluded corner or in a forest or withdraw into the mind. Sometimes they meditate inside the mosquito net. Now and then Ishan invited Hazra to his house. Hazra had a craze for outward purity. Sri Ramakrishna often disgraced him in this. Master to Ishan, let me tell you another thing. Don't be over fastidious about outward purity. Once a sadhu felt very thirsty. A water carrier was carrying water in his skin water bag and offered the water to the holy man. The sadhu asked if the skin was clean. The carrier said, Reverend sir, my skin bag is perfectly clean, but inside your skin are all sorts of filthy things. That's why I can ask you to drink water from my skin. It won't injure you. By your skin, the carrier meant the body, the belly, and so forth. Have faith in the name of God. Then you won't need even to go to holy places. Sri Ramakrishna saying, intoxicated with divine fervor. Why should I go to Ganga or Gaya to Kasi, Kanchi or Parbhas? So long as I can breathe my last with Kali's name upon my lips. Ishan remained silent. Master to Ishan, tell me if you have any more doubts. Ishan, you said everything when you spoke of faith. Master, God can be realized by true faith alone, and the realization is hastened if you believe everything about God. The cow that picks and chooses its food gives milk only in driblets. But if she eats all kinds of plants, then her milk flows is torrents. Once I heard a story, a man heard the command of God that he should see his ideal deity in a ram. He at once believed it. It is God who exists in all beings. 
a guru said to his disciple it is rama alone who resides in all bodies the disciple was a man of great faith one day a dog snatched a piece of bread from him and started to run away he ran after the dog with a jar of butter in his hand and cried again and again o rama stand still a minute that bread has not been buttered what tremendous faith krishna kishore had he used to say by chanting om krishna om rama one gets the result of a million sandhyas once he said to me secretly i don't like the sandhya and other devotions any more but don't tell anyone sometimes i too feel that way the mother revealed to me that she herself has become everything one day i was coming from the pine grove toward the panchavadi a dog followed me i stood still for a while near the panchavadi the thought came to my mind that the mother might say something to me through that dog you were absolutely right when you said that through faith alone one achieves all isan but we are householders master what if you are through his grace even the impossible becomes possible ram prasad saying this world is a mere framework of illusion another man composed a song by way of reply this very world is a mansion of mirth here i can eat here drink and make merry janaka's might was unsurpassed what did he lack of the world or the spirit holding to one as well as the other he drank his milk from a brimming cup one should first realize god through spiritual discipline in solitude and then live in the world only then one can be a king janaka what can you achieve otherwise further take the case of shiva he has everything kartika ganesha lakshmi and saraswati still sometimes he dances in a state of divine fervor chanting the name of rama and sometimes he is absorbed in samadhi i conclude this video at this point please like comment and share the video and subscribe the channel next video number 15 we'll start with chapter 14 instruction to vaishnavas and brahmos sunday september 23 1883 thank you for watching this video namaskar नमस्कार डियर फ्रेंड्स थैंक यू नमस्ते